Okay, welcome to Community Actions Lunch and Learn sessions. Um, the aim of these sessions is to present the numerous voluntary support organisations that we have here on the Isle of Wight, and particularly groups that help people with health and mental health issues. This first part of the session will be recorded, so you're very welcome to switch your cameras off at not Lamara, because you're going to be presenting for us. But, uh, and after the present presentation, we will um, stop the recording and then we'll have an um, opportunity to chat with you about your organisation. So um, today we welcome Lamara. Um, so, OK, so um, Lamara, you are from the U Trust. Um, please take it away. Thank you very much. Thank you for introducing me. So, yes, I am. Lamara, I um, work for the U Trust. So the U Trust is kind of the um, umbrella service. So within the U Trust, there is Paragon, which is the domestic abuse service. So I work for the domestic abuse service um, called Paragon on the Isle of Wight. Um, so I will share my screen with you. So if you could just let me know when you can see it. Can you see that? No. Okay, let's have a look. Um, oh, where you gone? Okay, so you can't see that one. Can you see that now? Yep, we've got that one. Brilliant. Okay, that's a good start. Um, so yeah, as I say, um, our organisation is the overarching organisation is the U Trust, um, but the domestic abuse part of the service is called Paragon. Um, I do provide a longer training session. So I provide a session that's about an hour and a half. If anybody that is watching this would like to book on to that um, more intense training session um, in regards to domestic abuse, please feel free to send me an email. My email address is provided in this training and I can get you booked into one of those sessions as well. So today I will share some information about Paragon, what we do, how to refer, and a little bit of information about my role. Um, so yeah, please let me know if you have any questions. So who are we in Paragon? So we are a team of people that are working in domestic abuse and stalking services. So our team are very passionate and a lot of us have um, either lived or worked and life experiences which we use to help people that we work with and each other. So we, I'm just going to move that because I know, I know that it means you probably can't see. There you go. Um, so what support can we offer? So obviously we work with anyone that is currently experiencing domestic abuse. So just a little bit of information about domestic abuse. Domestic abuse isn't just physical. Um, there is a sort of a common misconception that domestic abuse means physical abuse. It isn't just physical abuse, it's verbal abuse, emotional abuse, um, financial abuse, sexual abuse. Um, physical abuse can be a part of it, but it, it doesn't have to be physical for it to be considered domestic abuse. Um, so anybody that is experiencing any of those, and um, by domestic abuse, it means so somebody that is, is close to that person. So for example, a partner or an ex-partner is considered domestic abuse or um, sort of like a close family member. So someone that lives in the home, for example. So it could be that a, um, a mum is being abused by a 20-year-old a, a son or it could be that a 20-year-old son is being abused by their mum or it could be um, a brother and sister relationship. So for it to be considered domestic abuse, it has to be that sort of close, close relationship like that. Um, so we can provide emotional support around what is going on. So we would um, meet with the person or speak on the phone or wherever is safe to them, for them to speak, um, sort of like once a week. And we would provide, um, alongside this emotional support, we would provide lots of education so that they have an understanding around domestic abuse and what, what is happening to them. We would never sort of tell them to leave or end a relationship, but if they want to, um, based on the discussions that they we have, we can support them to, to do so. 
so we can support them to move out of the property we can support them to get into refuges um, we can support them by liaising with housing and finding an emergency accommodation equally we can um, help them to apply for legal orders such as an occupation order which is um, where if they wanted to stay in the property and they wanted the other person to leave it could go to court um, and if they're able to prove domestic abuse the other person would have to leave so ways of getting them out of the relationship we can support them with um, we can support them with safety planning so this is a big part of what we do so whenever we start uh, working with somebody we determine their risk and um, we give them safety planning according to this. So, for example, if they've ended the relationship, but the um, abuse continues, we can support them to make their house very safe. So we can put alarms on the doors, um, wedges on the letterbox, and we can support them to get the locks changed and things like that on the doors all for free. Um, and we can give them lots of advice around their phones and how to stay safe, safe using them, um, apps and support to uh, report to the police and um, gaining legal orders such as non-molestation orders, restraining orders. Or if they are planning to stay in the relationship, we give them safety advice around doing that. So to try and keep them safe in the relationship, in the home. Um, we might sign post to appropriate services. So for example, mental health services, or um, any other services that might be relevant. We um, can support people through court. So go to court with them as support. We can support them to report to the police. And um, we also provide recovery groups. So once a person is out of a relationship or ended a relationship, we can um, put them onto our recovery groups. We have a couple of different groups um, that are suitable for different people and they run sort of like on a weekly basis so for example over 12 weeks um we get really really good feedback on our recovery groups and they help people to sort of move forward after what's what's happened to them um we also have a counseling service so once someone has ended the relationship um, we can refer them on to our specialist domestic abuse counseling and um, this counseling sort of helps them with with the trauma that they've experienced in the past so we often refer them to this, um, sort of like at the end of our support. But we also um, accept referrals for people that have experienced historic domestic abuse. So if you work with anyone that has experienced um, domestic abuse in the past and um, is struggling because of it, then you can refer them for that as well. Um, so it doesn't just have to be current domestic abuse for us to provide a service. And um, we also support children who have witnessed um, the domestic abuse in the home. So we have children's workers who can go out to the schools and provide emotional support to, to children. So there are lots of areas that we can support with in terms of the domestic abuse. So just a, a couple of other things that we, we do. Um, so we have a refuge here on the Isle of Wight. Um, we provide lots of um, activities after school clubs um, and during um, uh, summer holidays, we provide activities and things in the refuge. Um, we train professionals, so we recently teamed up with um, mental health and inclusion, completed some training. Um, I do a lot of training within the hospital and um, we also have started to deliver uh, talks and sessions uh, to schools. Um, and we attend a range of multi-agency meetings. We also have done some job shadowing with the police and support them with um, any domestic abuse incidents that happen. They make a lot of referrals to us. And um, so there are lots of other things that we do in the background. Okay, so just a little bit of information about my role. So within Paragon, we all have our own uh, particular roles. And um, so, for example, there are some people who work out in the community that um, work with higher risk um, individuals. So that's based on the DASH assessment that we do on our, on our referral. So if it indicates that it's a high risk situation, they'll go with our IFAS, um, which is an independent domestic abuse advisor. If they are um, sort of like medium low or lower risk, then they go to our outreach workers. Um, we also have the children's workers, people that run the groups. Um, and then we have 
myself and my role is a domestic abuse health advocate. So what that means is that, um, so I accept referrals from health services. So all of the referrals from the hospital or GP surgeries or mental health services should come to me. Obviously, if I have a full caseload, then I can pass them on to colleagues as well. So we don't actually have a waiting list. So we were able to see people fairly quickly once the referral comes in. Um, so yeah, I try and encourage referrals across health services. I do regular training with health services. So um, specifically, I've done a lot of training with um, A&E, maternity, um, urgent treatment centre, and starting to sort of like go off into the rest of the hospital as well. I've also done um, some of the mental health services. Um, so yeah, just, just across the board. I also get um, phone calls if anyone um, needs any advice about domestic abuse. I also support staff at the hospital that may be experiencing domestic abuse as well. Um, so if you are referring to so if you are referring to Paragon um, and you are in the community, um, so if you're in a, any sort of any um, profession at all, then you need to email Paragon directly with a referral form. If you are referring from the NHS, um, just because of the, the contract that I have and the role that I'm doing with the NHS, um, you don't need to send a referral form. You just email myself, which is this email address, or phone me directly, and I can take the referral from you that way. But that is only if you are within NHS Health Services. Um, so I will send, uh, I can send this out afterwards if that's easier for everybody. Um, and so just to move forward quickly, um, so if it's, you're not from NHS um, and you're from anywhere else, um, then you uh, make the referrals to Paragon directly instead of to myself. Um, and this is how you do it. So you can telephone our telephone number or you can send an email. Um, so you can phone and make the referral or you can give our number to somebody to make yourself refer themselves. Or you can email us and ask for a referral form uh, we'll then send you a referral form and you can complete it and send it back to us. Um, the referral form is, is sort of like questions about um, the person that you're making the referral for. So that's the different ways of referring dependent on, on where you are. Um, so I can provide a training session um, on domestic abuse, which is about an hour and a half long. So I do give um, some information about domestic abuse. I also give a lot of information that is relevant to health services um, in sort of spotting signs and what to look out for and how to refer um, to for, for domestic abuse and the importance of people in, in health services, you know, looking out for signs and, and referring. Um, so if that um, is, is relevant for your team, I can come and do the uh, training with you. If not, then we have a um, training called Dragonfly under Paragon. It isn't myself that, that does this course. It's about half a day um, and it has more sort of in-depth information about domestic abuse and just um, domestic abuse in general. So this is free to anyone. Um, don't even have to be professional. So absolutely anyone in the community and um, they have regular dates. So feel free to contact us if you want to book yourself onto Dragonfly or if you want your team to do Dragonfly. They, we can do sort of like private sessions just for your team if you wanted that. Um, if you wanted it just for yourself, you can go onto the website, which is Eventbrite, and then type in Dragonfly Domestic Abuse, and then that will give you the option to book on. If you wanted it for your team, get in touch with us and we can arrange that for you. Um, it's a really, really good course. So just a little um, extra slide here about asking difficult questions. So if you um, are working with anybody that you feel might be experiencing domestic abuse, so 
So there are obviously going to be times that some people just tell you. Um, so they come to you and they express that they're experiencing this. And in, in that case, you can just refer them over to myself or Paragon straight away. Or there might be times when they don't tell you, but you are noticing that this might be something that's happening to them. So it might be that you notice injuries or it might be that you notice that they're becoming more anxious or isolating themselves more or not able to go anywhere on their own and not needing to ask for permission. It might be that they're not recognising that they're experiencing domestic abuse, but they tell you things and you notice that, you know, someone is controlling them by what they're saying. Um, so if, if it's that you are recognising things, you can ask questions. So, you know, you can um, say something along the lines of, can you tell me a little bit about your day-to-day -day life and what you do? Um, is it safe for you at home? Um, is everything okay at home? Um, are you experiencing any physical abuse? So lots and lots of questions that you can ask. Um, and you can ask any of these. You can pick ones that are a little bit more gentle or you can pick ones that are quite direct, dependent on the person. Um, but it's really important that we're asking the difficult questions um, because it might be that they've been waiting for someone to ask. It might be that you need to ask a couple of questions um, before they're actually going to open up to you and, and tell you what's been going on. Um, but at that point, once you've asked the question, if they answer and say yes, at that point, you can offer some support from our service. Um, so I showed that earlier, but I'll just show it again. Um, that is our contact details um, to Paragon directly. Um, so I'm happy to send this out afterwards if you want me to. Um, and that's, that's how you refer to our service. Or if you have any questions about our service, then feel free to, to give us a call on that number. So thank you very much. So that's the end of my. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Lamara. Right. OK, so um, we do have one question and I'm just going to leave the recording on for this one question. So um, Agnieszka, sorry if I pronounced your name wrong, Agnieszka, but she asks, what about GP practices, please? Um, are you talking about the training there? Uh, no, sorry. So my question is, uh, how um, do we refer from a GP practice? Because we do come under the NHS. So are we able to use the shortcut and go straight to Lamara herself? Or do we go through the main number and the free, uh, main email address? That's the question. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. So yes, um, because um, the GP surgeries are NHS, come directly through me. Um, so all GP surgeries and all NHS health services can come directly through me um, and that way you can avoid doing the referral form and just give me more minimal information. Um, I am currently the only health advocate but they are looking to employ somebody else at the moment so um, hopefully interviews and things will be soon um, but at the moment because I'm the only one when I go off on annual leave, I will put a, um, a notice on my voicemail, my email address, say that I'm off and I'll give information. But while I'm off, the referrals will need to be redirected to Paragon directly. But my um, my will, will tell you that. But once we've got someone new, then it will just be me all the time. Lovely. Thank you. Um, OK, so I'm just going to stop recording there because we, we've got some questions coming in. Um, Thank you. So the presentation will be on the Community Action website um, after today, hopefully. Um, and if you would like to send me your slides, um, I can put those add those on as well so people can have a, have a look independently. Right, okay, so 